What's up everyone? This is Kevin. How are you? I'm just making myself comfortable in my chair here. So a little bit of housekeeping before I begin. If you are thinking about becoming a yoga teacher, you are thinking about maybe doing a 200 hour, starting in September and finishing in May next year, over 10 months, then you can come to an open day that we're hosting at Yoga Hub on July 27th. That's a Saturday. It's a free event. It's a Q&A where you can come along and ask any questions that you may have, maybe get a chance to meet people that might be on the training course with you. Other bit of housekeeping is if you'd like to learn how to handstand, surprise, surprise, there is a workshop I'll be hosting, my first one outside of Dublin on August 31st in Greystone's yoga studio. All information is on my Instagram, also on my um, website, which is kevinboyyoga.ie. As always, this podcast is brought to you by Om Apparel, men's clothing company that want to encourage more fellas like me, like you, or like a fella you may know, to get into yoga. In my opinion is anything that gets you into yoga is good, and you can grow from there and discover what like what you like within the beautiful thing that is yoga. So men men are often don't know what to wear when they go to yoga i know it sounds trivial but fellas care about how they look too and uh, i've provided clothing for men that is all eco certified that is made with the utmost uh, processes in terms of looking after the environment and if you like to get some of their gear then you can go to om.com forward slash hashtag tylp that stands for the yoga Life podcast if you choose out your choose your gear and you put in the promo code kevin you get 15 percent off so that's om o h m m e dot com forward slash hashtag tylp you can get your gear with the promo code kevin 15 percent off not valid for clearance items the other sponsor i have we have because this is keeping this podcast the community of the yoga Life podcast going is small changes small changes organic eco-friendly plant-based whole foods and products and a refill bar and a juice bar with zero waste Ugh, that's a big mouthful so they're based here in drum Condra, dublin and they're opening another one in glass never very soon uh, yeah if you want to put good stuff in your face go to small changes okay without further ado i'm going to introduce the guest we got today ben forsyth now ben is a former pro mma fighter he's the brand director of eighth corner coffee he's a content creator and he's now the host of the fueling life podcast i met first met ben through a hot yoga class um he's now he started coming to my classes and um i feel the bromance is brewing see what i did there brewing coffee yeah nice okay if you enjoy this podcast please share it with your friends or your followers on friends and followers on your instagram and if you could leave a review on itunes that really helps with the visibility thank you everyone so far for all your donations or buying through the sponsors it really makes a big difference to me i absolutely love doing this and uh, any questions you have feel free to let me know otherwise enjoy the podcast <music> going on ben are you recording already yeah man oh <laughs> <laughs> since when <laughs> it's, it's an old this intro whole, this whole time this whole time i did in, i did the intro separate so well thanks for the coffee by the way oh yeah yeah mate what what coffee were we drinking earlier we were drinking straight uh, into advertising <laughs> <laughs> i think it was the best coffee <laughs> what, what was that quote it was like I've I haven't drank many cups of coffee in my life, but this this is the best one. <laughs> What's that? In? I can't even remember. Someone someone tagged me in it the other day. Um, I'm that, f- I'm feeling it, man, because I'm a, I'm a bit of a lightweight when it comes to coffee. Yeah, so, that that would have been stronger than the last day because I brewed it properly. It was it was good, man. It was uh it was fl- good flavors. I, mm. I was kind of it was malty, oh chocolatey. Oh, did you read the back of the bag? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Rumbled. Yeah. Yeah, it was a Guada. It's a really that's my favorite coffee that we have at the moment. Guatemalan. Yes. Way way Tenango. Way way Tenango. Yeah. Is that a place? It's. I think it's a region. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, Don't so, quote me on that. So to give nah, to give people is. a little bit of context, mm-hmm. I I actually first. It sounds weird. I first saw you. I saw you from across the room. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I remember seeing you in um, in it yoga. 
and this is a, probably about like three years ago. That's probably. crazy. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't. I tell Janet that. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Because still in Ireland, there's not that many fellas that do yoga. That's. I was thinking that actually. So yeah. I was like, "Who's this guy?" And you know, I thought. Um, you, just, you notice other fellas, and sometimes when you see another fella, you kind of do the little nod at each other, like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you acknowledge each other, yeah. but you're both, yeah. but you're both there. And then, um, it's true. And then, fast forward a couple of years later, um, you came to to my class, mm. and uh, again, I when I ever I see a fella, I I I, I think to myself like. Um, some people don't realize, but for some men, for example, certain basic thing movements are quite difficult compared mm. to women. Yeah, for sure. O- obviously, I'm generalizing, but mm-hmm. even things like certain seated postures, forward mm. folds, this, mm. this type of thing. So I always make an effort to, if I see someone who's a slight outlier, this may mean someone who just maybe has an injury or is older or mm. is a man. Mm. Like for certain, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll be, I'll acknowledge them to yeah. be like fair play for coming because I I know when I first started in yoga, mm. I maybe you didn't feel this but i i felt i was very self-conscious about like yeah. being the only guy there and um and stuff that i couldn't do mm-hmm. um but um did w- you did you ever experience that I maybe back in, when i was in innis probably yeah. um never too much um I, I wasn't worried about being the only guy there probably probably like that but <laughs> <laughs> um, no um i definitely was yeah self conscious more way more self-conscious than about actual to vis- how it looked or how i looked rather not my, my face but <laughs> how my and my postures and stuff looked and stuff and yeah i did notice that it again generalizing and not mm. not to offend anyone but it seems to be a bit easier for the female mm-hmm. uh, structure so um uh yeah I, but there was a lot of mirrors and in, in it oh, yeah. as well so that kind of I don't know if that helped or hindered. I'm not sure, mm. um, but you were always very aware of of how how you looked doing it, mm. which I'm not sure is that is that a go- I can understand they're they're probably a, as a good tool. The mirrors, yeah, but yeah. at the same time, it really it probably takes you away from the focus that you should be focusing on, mm. maybe because you it's not actually about what it looks like. That is a, that's a good mm. point because I think if from a an owner's a studio owner's point of view. Mm. The mirrors make the place look bigger for a start, but also the thing about alignment and are your feet in a certain way and you can see it in the mirror. I think that's moving. I think that's becoming less and less important the more we learn about the body. You Mm. know, I think people are realizing that alignment isn't the be all and end all and everyone is completely different. So I actually think mirrors... um, I don't know. I, I think with Init Yoga, it did actually create a bit of a buzz when you could see everyone. And yeah. it, it made you. And um, But I think that is hot yoga. That's kind of, that's. Oh, that, is it? They yeah. do that. Oh, in all hot yoga studios that I've been to, there are mirrors. Oh, yeah. yeah. Actually, cause I sometimes forget that that was only hot yoga there. Yeah. I don't, I, it was, wasn't it? I yeah, mean, I'm yeah. pretty sure. I never, I actually just didn't even think of it. I suppose, well, in it means hot. So um, Does it? Yeah, yeah. In what language? Uh, Filipino. Oh shit! Sure. Yeah, because yeah. Jean was from the Philippines. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. oh, interesting. Yeah. Um, I, I had like a when I was in the Philippines last year. Like I, I remember like the guys on the boat that were and he, they were like, oh, in the, like talking about how hot it was, and I was like, oh my god, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> it was like it was like years <laughs> later after being in the yoga studio. <laughs> I was like, oh, <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, uh, but um, so you 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 what's interesting for you um. Or, or about you is that you've gone from fighting which is as yang as you can get to, <laughs> to, to doing yoga mm. uh, why'd you start yoga big question mm. um like back then or why have i kind of went more deep into it now i suppose no maybe. but back then um it was it, it, then i just uh, i felt like it was something that i just should do to cover my bases in terms of stretching because i think a lot of fighters <laughs> don't uh, i think a lot of fighters don't like we don't prioritize stretching enough mm. i would say and again i'm probably generalizing and there's probably people fighters they were like what are you talking about i stretch all the time um mm. But uh, I just think it's low on the priorities. Like we're more worried about getting good at boxing, getting good at wrestling, mm. you know, getting enough jujitsu classes in, eating, sleeping, all this kind of stuff. So for me, I was just like, oh, like I should just do um, a bit of yoga because that's then at least I'm stretching once a week or yeah. whatever it was. Yeah. And Janet had done um, 
a lot over in London when she lived in London for a couple of years. So she, I think she pretty much dragged me there. Mm. Um, so I suppose then it was not so much a thing that I wanted to do. It was a thing that I felt I should do. Yeah. I suppose. Um, so it wasn't exactly like I was like, oh, I really want to do yoga. Mm. It was just like, oh, okay, I better go and do this. Yeah. Because mm. then you're, yeah, and I, I completely get that because, um, which is kind of, it's a good reason to start. Uh, mm. But would you say now that your reasons for continuing have, have changed? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because you, you go a lot, man. Yeah, I go a lot now. Um, yeah, it's just different now. And now... I just don't care about I'm I'm literally not going to to look a certain way or achieve a certain thing or like I don't I don't I just really don't care like what if mm. I can do uh stand, what's the one that I can't do at all <laughs> <laughs> the one that I don't care about not being able to do uh what, the, the standing the split like the standing split thing or something like can barely uh, lift my back leg off the ground <laughs> but like I, I used to be like what what's going on like why can't yeah. I do this yeah um but now I'm like ah, it'll get there whatever it'll It'll creep its way up there, I'm sure, over the years. Um, and I, so now, I don't know, I, I just go now just to, for the, kind of a, hmm, I need to think about this. <laughs> well, you, well, you're big in, I yeah. mean, because I know um, mm. you're big into, you go to the breathwork classes. You, you, mm. you, you, yeah. you, you're interested in that. And I yeah. think that, as we would, we actually talked about this earlier, how in jiu-jitsu, breathing is so beneficial and mm. and and generally in in life for managing your emotions breathing is is so good um so there's there's that part of it um mm. i mean okay so so i want to i want i want to talk about that mm. but also mm. i want to mm. talk about the kind of more uh i mean you've ch you've changed haven't you yeah yeah because yeah. because i, I def definitely have become more spiritual in yeah the, in the this past is, while yeah. this is what i'm trying to this is what i'm trying to get to yeah, so, yeah. so um and that yeah. is why i would because i what like why i joined was kundalini um because i'd heard was like i said to you oh 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 banging the table so, so good um getting passionate now because <laughs> um, i'd heard russell brand talking about like kundalini and other people i think as well i think mm. are, who was someone on joe rogan and <laughs> someone who i can't remember who was talking about it but i've heard it um a lot and i definitely haven't wanted to delve more into like spiritual kind of things um why is that <laughs> yeah good question yeah uh, good question <laughs> um yeah so gives a good answer yeah, then. <laughs> gives a good answer uh so i just this year i started to do some kind of work I would call it going through to work uh, with some plant medicines and stuff. So, uh -oh. yeah, um, nothing that you'd know about, Kev. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet, anyway. We find out after the podcast. <laughs> um, I suppose, yeah. And then and since then, I've, I've, I, I've kind of it opened the door to more kind of like what is, or the, my curiosity rather, probably to um, to kind of what else is out there. I had, mm. a, had a great feeling a sense of oneness mm -hmm. um so and then i feel like with yoga seems to be in that kind of world obviously it, it, it tends to be anyway mm. i can't even formulate what my words right now but what about mm. what what let what started this because uh, <clears throat> so um how you were a pro fighter when did you stop that uh only last year i made the decision to stop fighting yeah but, um i actually had a my last fight was July 2017. The actual fight was in the tree arena. Um, Why did you stop? There was a, a lot of things like, because um, I've been fighting since I was very young, like in some form, like I started Taekwondo when I was six. Um, so in some form I've been fighting for like, you know, 20, 21 years by the time I decided to stop, like whether it was Taekwondo or boxing or kickboxing or jujitsu. Um, and I don't know, it's, when you're doing something for that long, I don't know, I, I think I got to a point where I was like, I don't know if I'm doing this because I want to do it or if I'm doing this because it's like what I, I'm programmed to do or something, you know, that kind of way. Mm. So I just started to really be quite introspective and it's kind of, but aided by um, a teammate of mine, um, Will Flurry, who still fights now. He just won actually on the weekend over in Bellator in, in Oklahoma. Mm. Um, so he... he is uh, very much uh, like kind of a, a savage fight. Like he definitely has a fighter's mindset kind of thing. Mm. And he would have been one of my main training partners. Mm -hmm. 
and he was always not in a not in an invasive way but he was kind of like questioning my intentions and stuff and whether i wanted to do it or not but not in an i, I don't not in a prodding way or anything he would just he knew mm. he knew that deep down that i wasn't really a fighter anymore like i just didn't just didn't i, have, I didn't have the passion for it anymore mm. so it, it kind of went on for a while like I, I would have been fighting during kind of somewhat knowing this you know um there was definitely a time when i really really was just that was it that's all i was going to do um and but it just kind of culminated then like i i'm trying to i'm trying to pinpoint the time for year like when um but like so i did the european championships in 2015 um the amateur championships and i i won gold in that which was like best moment of my whole thing it was amazing um and then turned professional and fought say once in the uk and then once in the three arena then in dublin like my second professional fight which is which is very early on in a career was like in the three arena that's crazy yeah in front of like a hometown crowd and all it was pretty cool um and then i think then the next fight so it was kind of okay then you know it was kind of like i was still going oh yeah this is kind of what i want to do and stuff um but I don't, I don't know. I, it's so fun. I'm, I'm digging in deep here. I'm trying to, trying to really be honest and think about it. I think there was always something in me f that just didn't particularly like the idea of fighting. Like I love martial arts. Like I love, like we were just talking about there. I love like Bruce Lee and stuff, and mm -hmm. and the kind of the martial artist as a, a martial arts as a lifestyle. I suppose mm -hmm. I really, really like, and um, just some of the the ethos and the what's the word I'm looking for. Um, the morals and philosophies i suppose yeah. yeah like i've always loved that still do mm -hmm. but a, but a fighter is a different thing especially an mma fighter it's not it's not romantic at all like mm. I, I people like to romanticize it and there's some element of that you know walking out in front of the crowd and you know having this but when you get punched in the face like it's not very it's mm. very it's very real or like you're like someone kicks you in the leg and you can't walk for a week afterwards or you know you even checking a kick like and you catch it shin to shin Ugh. you know what i mean yeah so like it's it's i don't know you have to really 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 want to do it yeah. um um i can't remember where i was yeah going with no, that. no, mm. no I, that's i mean i i as you said the martial artist mindset the discipline all, mm. all that stuff is very romantic mm. the thought of it but um maybe uh as you you talk, referenced your training part or your partner who fought yeah. in Oklahoma, and you know he's a fighter, fighter. Where yeah. some some people are athletic, yeah, like perhaps like yourself, mm. and they have the ability to fight, and therefore maybe you feel slightly obliged. Like I have the, a gift here, I have an ability, I should make the most of it. But is that the right intention? Is that the, yeah, you know? Um, do, did you could you pinpoint a moment where you said, "All right, this is it now," whether it be. Because I watched some of your stuff on YouTube, some of your fights. Did mm. you have a moment in a fight where you're like, um, uh, "This is the last straw," or "This is this is something that's telling me that it's enough," or was mm. it actually after a fight and it was something happened in your life, or was it a gradual mm. thing? Yeah, because you kind of have that every fight, pretty much every fighter <laughs> goes go is like, "It's like, what am I doing here?" And then like, it doesn't really happen during it. You're not really thinking that. You're kind of, and then afterwards, you're usually like, "Oh, I can't wait to go again," and then you kind of come down again. And you go like, "It's a." A roller coaster but like i don't think there's any fighter really if they're speaking honestly who will say yeah for all of the time coming up to that fight i 100 percent wanted to do it you know because mm -hmm. it's just a strange thing you're like scheduled to fight someone on a certain day at a certain time and you know what's going to happen and if you if you if you don't do it like people might think a certain thing about you or blah 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 mm -hmm. um so i think that i always i think i always felt like that i was like oh, what am i doing um mm -hmm. I, I saw when I, I did have one fight oh, the next fight then my third professional fight over in where was I Abu Dhabi I believe mm. and I fought this uh, big German like man I would call him you know like, <laughs> hey, man. Uh, man big German man he, and uh, I was I'd been struggling kind of with mindset going into that fight um, because the fight I had prior oh sorry that was actually my fourth fight sorry the fight I had prior was actually in, in Bahrain and I've had a fight with a guy and I kind of like it was a very close fight and he ended up winning with decision I think and um 
but I just wasn't really going for it, you know. And then so then kind of maybe between some of my coaches and stuff, they started to kind of be like, oh, is there something up? Like, mm. um, they were trying to, and we were like collectively, we were trying to like find my why. You know, they were like, you need to have a reason, you know, why you fight. Like in that movie, Cinderella Man. <laughs> um, and he's like, I know why I'm fighting now. Mm. And like, why? And he's like, milk. <laughs> because he just had no money he was so broke that he wanted to fight but that was his why like he needed to just take care of his family and stuff mm. so we were trying to like kind of find mine but then as I was like looking for it I was like I don't know if I have one like I don't think I actually have a reason so that was all in my head and then I went going into that next fight I was kind of just like lying to myself I was like come on just like just like motive, trying to motivate yourself but to, mm. like motivating yourself without it was like trying to motivate my this fire without the fuel for the fire yeah. if you know what I mean so you just I don't know, like, just, nothing's got to happen. So, like, I had that fight and the guy just beat the crap out of me. Oh, shit. And uh, it re- pretty quickly. And I just I just was like, and I called him a man because I just felt he made me feel like a little boy. Like, oh, he just, wow. like, beat the crap out of me. And uh, I was just like, what is, go-? like, I was just completely, like, shook. Yeah. Um, and then so- what, what kick- I'm going to close this window because what build is outside. Yeah. But my next question is, yeah. <laughs> what then, because it's a big jump from that. Okay, you mm. stop fighting, but mm. then what, led you to th- even think about plant medicine mm. oh uh-huh. ah. like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, can cut that bit that doesn't matter Kevin is making his way to the window and he's now returning to his chair <laughs> it is, is it? time to get snacks yay <laughs> this co- podcast is sponsored by <laughs> um, small changes <laughs> <laughs> Um, um, so yes I will I will just, I'll finish off by saying that uh, like that there was like kind of a pinnacle moment when I had just went to um, I went for food with Janet and Will we did actually we did an escape room you know the escape rooms and they're really cool Janet um, is your girlfriend yeah, by the yeah, way yeah, yeah. People are... and uh, sorry yes okay. hi Janet who's, um, Will? who's Will and Will Flurry is the, the fighter yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's, who was my main training partner so we went for a bit of food and then afterwards I can't, we just got into a conversation and again like I would say he always kind of knew that it probably wasn't for me you know um, and in the nicest way possible you know we're really good friends we're still really good friends Um, but he was kind of like kind of going oh is that me or you that's good um we were just having a conversation and he was like you know you need to like think in this way you should want to like i can't can't remember the exact words but there was a point where like i had a sparring session lined up on the friday and he was like try and kill that guy he's like when you go in there don't worry about it like go go and kill him like literally he's like if you're not willing to do that this is not sport for you which is a very broad like you know obviously that's not the way it is but it kind of like lit something in my brain and i was like driving home with janet and i was kind of going i don't know if i do want to do that mm. or have any desire to do that or will feel any gratification for doing that and i was kind of just thinking about it for so i sat on it for like a good week or so i think and then just one day i was like I think I'm gonna stop fighting and it was really like a real clear moment and I rang Will and I was like I think I'm gonna stop fighting and he was like good mm-hmm. yeah so he knew the whole time kind of thing mm-hmm. um, and he was trying to like lead me to the decision uh, but when I made it then I just felt like so good I was like ah mm-hmm. I don't have to do this thing actually yeah I don't have is it, no one care and then I, now there was a mo a few like a, a while because I didn't tell anyone really I told him and her and a few other my housemates something like that I, and I was kind of struggling with the fact that or the idea that that was what defined me because it did for many every time I see someone like oh when's the next fight oh yeah don't, fair play to you da, da, da. you know so for the next while I did kind of struggle with I didn't tell anyone and then I had people like being like oh when's and I just kind of be lying I'd be like oh yeah probably September and you know da 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 um making stuff up essentially and I just got to a point where I was like I need to just own this decision I think it was one of my housemates Aiden he said that to me he's like you need to just own it and so I just put up a status as you do how, do, how does anyone else retire these days <laughs> they uh, just put up a, a Facebook and Instagram post yeah. um, so and I just wrote up essentially like a thankful post I was just like look I've had loads of great experiences and stuff and and then like the feedback I got then was just like like amazing like everyone was like oh like respect 
respecting me for making the decision and like I, I was expecting people to be like oh what is there was, there was like one person who was like please no don't do it <laughs> like uh some guy from over in like india or something who's like some <laughs> fan or something on on facebook it was like no tell me why and all this kind of stuff i was like i'm not gonna get into it um but my, everyone else like all the fighters in the gym like i went in the next day after putting up that post for jiu-jitsu class then because i so along with retiring i was i did i'm I stopped doing any contact sport, like any uh, kickboxing, boxing, any of that, any head contact stuff, because that was another element of why I wanted to quit was just the risk of the of brain injury. So I just stopped everything. So the next day I went in for a jiu-jitsu class and everyone was like, it was literally like barely anything happened. Mm. They were like, oh, what's up, Ben? How's it going? Yeah. You know? Okay. So like, because Ben, because like, when then I was like, Ben is Ben. Ben is not the a fighter. Like, mm-hmm. that's not what defined me. But it took me a long time to realize that. With the head injuries thing, mm. is that something you have you had um, many concussions? Uh, yeah, I would have had it. Yeah, have a good few. Um, the concussions I don't think are the, are the are the problem though, as um, as we're told, which sounds kind of funny. Um, but they you recover from a concussion, but it's the built up like every day, you know, knocking on your brain kind of that mm. will build up um, this kind of tau protein in your brain is is what it's called that um, eventually will could you know just completely slow you down and um be something similar to like the effects of parkinson's and stuff like that and this is what you know they kind of speculate now is what happened with muhammad ali and stuff is actually just because of the repetitive um knocking um Mm. every day just small hits small hits small hits Mm. and building up building up and then eventually your brain just kind of can't function in the same way anymore and we were very educated on that john would educate us um quite well and when i when i decided to retire and i spoke to john i was kind of talking to him about that and he was saying look well my job is to educate you guys as best as possible on the risks and then you make an adult decision based off of that whether you want to fight or not fight um and he was very supportive as well he was kind of going look if you've got one foot out you should go all the way out because this is not the kind of sport where you can have and that you could see that from my last tr- the three fights that I had lost like uh, coming up to the when I finished like you could just see that I just wasn't in it mm. 100% anymore I just was really struggling in my in my brain to want to do it even mm. so um, yeah everything everything was actually uh, from then was pretty dandy like and, and uh, I kind of even I look back at it now with so much um gratitude and and just um it was just i can actually see it for what it was like which was a lot of really cool experiences and people and traveling and you know i got to do something that only a small percentage of people in the world are even willing to do Mm. you know um and i can actually be proud that i did it so since then it's been pretty nice (laughs) have have you ever had an mri scan oh yeah yeah you have to get one every year Okay. Um, just to make sure like there's a lot of uh, strict rules got kind of put in um in the past few years where we kind of had to um get uh, i think every year we could have to get it yeah. uh, and is uh did they ever see anything that no. was concerned no no nothing um nothing i think they're just happy that there was a brain in there yeah <laughs> you know? um no and like you won't see um any of that stuff on a mri either that's the thing yeah oh. you won't see t- you can't see tear protein Um, you can see it i think on a cat scan which is uh like our pet scan sorry pet scan mm. um which is i think very 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 expensive mm. um to get um and the only other time you can see is when you're dead and they cut your brain open right, it's a bit late then. yes yeah. it's, and that's uh, that's kind of when they started to discover it like but even mm. even it sounds this sounds very timid. But mm. even if you were to play football all the time and mm-hmm. head, head the ball yeah. a lot, yeah. I mean now they're saying potentially repetitive heading of the ball, yeah, um, can add up. It can, yeah, it can. I uh, supposedly, but it, you have to. There's a level to it. Like, the, the, did you see the movie Concussion with Will no. Smith? So that's no. what that movie's about. It's very good. You should watch it. Is it? Actually. Is it a good movie? Yeah, it really is. It's about uh, as this doctor is called Doctor Bennett Omalu. It's a true uh, story, right? Yep. Yeah. And yeah. it was about him kind of discovering this problem in the NFL and then trying to expose and, you know, the, the whole of America hating him because he was trying to ruin their favorite sport kind of thing. Um, but he actually came over for a seminar in Ireland and he was like, he had gone real deep into it. He was kind of saying basically no one should play any sports kind of thing. He has gone just too much into it because like, mm. you know, kids can't you know play football because they're going to head the ball and blah, blah, blah. Mm. So I think there's a level to it, like, you know, 
but I don't know if anyone knows what that is or what is the your recommended daily allowance of head knocks or I'm not sure. Yeah, I mean that that's the thing. E- even like I mean, obviously I I'm j- I'm a white belt jiu jitsu. I'm not mm. I'm a beginner, but mm. um, even with jiu jitsu, I've dislocated my finger, broken my hand. <laughs> all right, um, but um, but despite that, um, and I realise that if I have a broken hand. Uh, it's quite difficult to teach yoga mm. but i i think it's worth it i i, I mean I, obviously that's not your brain you know your yeah. bones heal yeah. that's fine yeah um you know because you can't be live too much in cotton wool can you i mean the, as i said the brain is a completely different subject and mm. we don't know or i don't know do we do we know the abilities the brain's ability to heal itself i think mm. i think there's so much about the brain we don't understand isn't there yeah R- really um but um yeah i think that the beauty of jiu-jitsu is that there isn't um, striking. So yeah, yeah, there's no long-term risk. Well, except for a few sore uh, joints. But, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, you're not getting hit in the head. So that's why it's great because I could just do that now. Mm. So I can still be... Like there was a point as well when I really knew that I was out when someone asked me... It might have been Will again. He asked me, what will I miss most about fighting? And I was like, nothing. Wow. Because I keep everything that I liked which is like the community, the the training in some way, like the tra- like you, I could still travel, I could still corner, I could still have all the camaraderie, um, just be involved in that world, all the stuff that I actually enjoyed, like really enjoyed. Obviously, I did enjoy fighting for a long time, mm-hmm. um, certain aspects of it, but I kept all the things that I really enjoyed. Mm-hmm. So it was it was at that point kind of I was going, oh, I definitely don't, I definitely don't need to fight anymore. Like, mm-hmm. um. But it's interesting moving from such a macho world. And when I say macho, I mean mm. like, you know, women can be macho too. Mm. To, okay, sorry. By the way, from an outside perspective, it is mm. a macho world. Mm-hmm. But actually, a lot of time when you do jiu-jitsu, you will find macho people, mm-hmm. but also you'll find geeky people, all kinds of yeah, people. They're usually the really good ones. <laughs> yeah, they are. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but now going into the... the the yogic world mm. you haven't you don't just practice yoga like i said you you, you did the breath work class mm. um you did your and i've asked you about this the ecstatic, oh, ecstatic dancing oh yeah, yeah. okay that was, that was I, I awesome want, yeah. i want to get into this so the ecstatic yeah. so it's th- it's monday today you did the ecstatic dancing last week right yeah last wednesday yeah last wednesday D- yeah go <laughs> <laughs> i want to know yeah, yeah. because we we me and ben had a uh this time last week we, ben was around we had a coffee we were chatting mm. and i was saying you were talking about dancing in general and mm. and 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 me as well i find i'm pretty comfortable in my body but i find dancing kind of a bit awkward yeah. if i'm not drunk and i don't drink anymore yeah, yeah, yeah. so <laughs> so aesthetic dancing Break yeah, it, break it down. Break it down. <laughs> yeah, I did break it down. No, uh, no, I did not. Um, so, what is it first? Yeah, like I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I just been hearing about this kind of ecstatic dancing for ages, like but from people like Aubrey Marcus, who uh, is the owner of Onnit, who I just love that company and everything they do. Mm. Um, actually, they used to sponsor me when I fought. Actually, it was the best scenario ever. Yeah. Um, and and if he's listening, by the way, if, I, if you're listening, I'm open yeah. to sponsors. Yeah, well. yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sorry, Ben. Um, but I. I, I don't know uh, like for me dancing was always being like uh, the two things I'm most uncomfortable slash scared of are dancing and swimming so <laughs> and um I like I've always wanted to just get over it, you know because it's especially at, like parties and all that kind of stuff um you know when you're you're sitting you're like I'm always the one sitting down and everyone's dancing and I, I do envy them a little bit like I'm just kind of going oh, like I wouldn't mind just getting up there but then there was something always inside me that like stops me getting up and like Janet loves dancing and I would feel like really bad and like because oh, it just become you know people are grabbing your arm and pulling you like come on come on and that makes it worse and you're like no leave me alone and <laughs> so I just I don't like I didn't I don't like that trait um so hmm. um it's something I've been really like consciously like trying to fix over the past while and even before that class I I, I went to a wedding recently with Janet and I was I just made sure that I was up dancing the whole night good man now I don't know what it looked like, but uh, I, I was up anyway. <laughs> Did you just say, so, because uh, I'm going to, sorry to interrupt you, I'm mm. going to a wedding in a few weeks mm. with Rach mm. and I'm not going to drink mm. and I'm going to, I want to dance. So what was your tactic at the wedding? Um, I, I was actually, I see, I kind of just realized um, um, actually during one of the ceremonies, which I'm sure we'll talk about now in a minute, um, I had this kind of like just, 
uh, I'm going to say vision, but it wasn't, you know what I mean? It was like a message, I suppose, that it, it wasn't about me. Like, it's actually, I, so from, so Janet just really, really likes it. So, Fancy. yeah, so during the, this kind of ceremony, um, it was just, I had this kind of moment where I was like, like, just do it for her. Like, who cares about you? Like, not who cares about you, but like, you may feel uncomfortable and all this kind of stuff, but mm. the joy that it will bring her is going to outweigh that like all the time. So you should just suck it up basically and mm. just and just get up and dance with her because it'll mean the world to her. So like that was in my head. And the first opportunity I had to do that from after that um, ceremony was um, uh, that a wedding. So mm. I was like, it was just in my head. It was just ingrained in my head. That, like, that's what I'm going to do. I'm just So I just made the decision essentially to get up and just no matter what, just and was it like what stage of the night was it? Was the dance floor busy? Or was it just you and her? No, I was busy. Yeah, was, and yeah. What, kind of, what music? What song was on Jumba? I was. No, I don't really remember. Sometimes if it's like Beyonce, you're like, ah oh, man, I can't work with this. But if I've got a bit of yeah. a bit of hip hop, <laughs> yeah. I, I can do. Yeah, my it's can, a tricky one. If I've got a bit of hip hop, bit of house mm. or garage, yeah. I'm, that's, I'm from London. Mm. I'm like, I can work with this. I got. Okay. I know I can go to my default moves. Yeah. But um, and so once you started dancing, were you like? Was it like one song in, one song in? You thought I'm cool now. I'm in the group. No, no. The whole time it was very, <laughs> I was very present, being like, "Oh, this is awkward," but I was slowly trying to let it go and yeah, man. just and you, do, no one cares. That is what it, like that is the truth. Like people do not care what you're doing. Like um, mm. and it, um, they're not they're not looking at you. Like they're worried about themselves. Yeah. probably which is kind of sad in a way like every, <laughs> it's kind of just a lot of self-conscious people uh moving around each other and uh thinking about that the other pe- people are looking at them but they're not really there um but when you but when you're drunk though you don't that's the thing that you lose the self the, you're not as self-conscious i think that's why drink is so helpful in that way yeah yeah for sure were you drink at the wedding yeah i did drink at that wedding actually yeah. so that definitely helped and were i you drunk would you say nah no 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 um, I don't think um, I I still think I would have done it because it was in my head yeah. to do it. This sounds so trivial. Some people are probably listening, being like, "Like, why wouldn't you dance?" Like, do you know what I mean? But uh, it's it's difficult enough when you're when it's something that is actually you feel really uncomfortable with. Yeah. So then going to the um, ecstatic dance. So I think this. I don't know if <laughs> they they call this. It's called embodiment. Like anyone can do it. It's on um, in dance house in kind of near Talbot Street. Uh, it's on a Wednesday night. I think, although I think this Wednesday is our last one until September or something like that. Mm. Um, um, I think they call. I don't know if the, if the class is called embodiment or that's the name of the type of dance. I'm not really sure, but I think it's the same thing as ecstatic dance. Right. I'm, I'm pretty sure because essentially, so I went there and uh, so a housemate moved in, a girl moved into her house and she told me about it and I was kind of like, oh cool, I've been really wanting to try that. Um, so I went along and. Uh, it was actually just because you're talking about music there that you can vibe with it was when I went in and this happens to me so much uh, it was like the universe being like ah you finally made it because the first song they played was one that I love um, and it was real it's actually by this artist called Parangi who's like he does all this kind of how would I describe it I was like jungle kind of music but not jung- not jungle as in what you're thinking, jungle? Jungle like, Lon- like yeah, like not, 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 not London. Bass. Yeah, no, no. no, not German bass, but like actually, like you know, Mon- lots, sounds lots of monkeys. And yeah, stuff. like stuff like that, oh, like really? bir- birds and stuff, and then, <laughs> but then like, and then the drums and stuff will kick in. But he'll be using his voice and all, hmm. uh, and it was just real. And then it started playing, and I was just like, ah, oh, I love when this happens. Hmm. It actually happened in my first yo- Kundalini class as well in Yoga Hub. When I walked in, the song that the girl was playing was the same song that I had on my car on the way there. Oh, wow. And I was like, I'm in the right place, <laughs> you know? Um, so, like, I had the same thing in the dance, uh, in the in the embodiment mm. uh, class, what they call it. And uh, So how did it start off? You walk in. You walk in, there's a lot, a lot of people. Like, it's a big room, a lot of people, and they just have, like, it's actually a DJ there. Whoa. It's sick. It's so Whoa. cool. And uh, so he's just vibing. He's just, and, the, and they just start playing. And you kind of, I think it opened, um, like, kind of, you all kind of stand in a circle and do a bit of a stretch, a bit of a breathing thing, like, almost like a, not a, not a vinyasa, but what, I don't know what the, like, you know, reach up to the sun, sky. Sun, sun salutation. Yeah. Is that what it's called? Yeah. And um, just like breathe and then like down to the ground and like kind of, you know, mm. a little bit of a sun salutation, I suppose. Um, and um and then just yeah then they just turn turn the music up and you're just encouraged to basically move however you want 
for the two hours whatever it is like mm-hmm. th- there's no there's no right or wrong and that's that was the hard thing to get yeah it, it like i'd say i think i remember like three occasions during it where i was actually conscious of like being like oh don't do that or you know what i mean there was maybe like three so actually i thought i did pretty well because so i I started off actually just by breathing because i was like i don't know if it was the most natural thing to me or what i felt most comfortable with but i essentially just sat down and cross-legged and just started doing like rounds of the kind of wim hof kind of pranayama breathing Mm -hmm. so i did like the wim hof one which is like the heavy exhales and then for 30 and then you like hold it and that's because then i did like the breath of fire um, with same thing I did three rounds of each and stuff and then I just kind of like in that cross leg position I just kind of started moving like kind of slowly like side to side um, mm-hmm. with the music then but it was like good it was like drums like like this kind hey, of that's good yeah, man. yeah I can be I, yeah, I do a lot of beatboxing as well Mate, <laughs> yeah I was cool so I was getting real into it then I was like, oh yeah, I can vibe with this. But if I, if I had been like you said, like Beyonce or something like that, yeah. I would have been like, oh, I don't know about this. But it wasn't. It was real primal stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, and I was like, oh, deadly. So then, yeah. So you literally just you're encouraged to just do whatever you want for like yeah. move in whatever way you want. So some some people are stretching. Some people are um just kind of rolling. Some people are really good dancers. They're like jumping around the room and mm-hmm. and you you have your own kind of space that they kind of tell you to feel out at the start. Like you like make a circle essentially and you kind of you like you know establish your space almost and you and so you can you know that no one's probably not going to come into that. You know, so I think it's about forty five minutes of then and I was eyes closed the whole time pretty much. Um, and I was just, just kind of moving, like real That's like, a good idea. Eyes closed is a good idea, actually. I was, yeah, because I don't think I could have, I wouldn't have done as well, but eyes open at the start. Because then eyes closed completely takes that kind of feeling away from that people are watching you. You just, I was just like trying to go into myself so much. Mm. Lots of breathing, lots of, and then just light movements, stuff like left and right and stuff. And it's kind of a bit of stretching, a bit of like downward dog, a bit of mm. like just kind of molasses, like just down, like squatting, kind of moving side to side, just trying to loosen out. Mm-hmm. It was really cool. And then they do start to encourage you to dance with people then. Mm-hmm. Like, not like, not like you know, uh, like holding on to them, but just around them. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Um, and I didn't do that. I kept my eyes closed and just stayed by myself. <laughs> I just wasn't really, I wasn't really ready for it yet, I think. So I just really was trying to be with myself. Mm-hmm. And then it was only when they said, all right, now get it like a bigger group, like three or four people. And then there was some people near me. And I felt at that time, and that was probably about an hour in. I was like, okay, now I feel like I can kind of move with people. And then it was really fun yeah. because everyone, because you just kind of realize that nobody cares. Um, yeah. Because they, like, yeah, I had to just keep telling myself that they're there for the exact same reason you're there. So, like, it doesn't matter. And then, and it probably is the same at a wedding and stuff like that. Like, nobody, it doesn't matter. But then I, I got a bit trippy in it. Like, I got, had a, like a bit of a mad, like, I was like kind of moving and dancing and stuff like that. At that point, my eyes are closed. And then, like, I was, I could like picture everyone like looking at me like and I was like oh yeah but then but then then them looking at me like manifested into them like clapping me on <laughs> like and then and then and they're all like kind of sitting there and then like kind of dancing with my movements and they're all just kind of like yeah like encouraging me then and I was like oh yeah like I was like when you think about it like probably like if you just have this like energy where you're just moving and you're happy and like people will pick up on that and they'd be like yeah go Ben you know, and so that's what I was like visualizing and then I was like real happy and then I started moving more and more and then I started like jumping up and down and like because the, the music kind of goes from like a more mellow kind of jungle stuff then like to high tempo yeah. like um, almost like rave stuff but it's still kind of jungly and stuff as well yeah. um, so it was like you know it's heavy enough and you're just like jumping jumping up and down and raving there's people screaming and like just laughing and yeah. um, and then it slows down again towards the end and I kind of got um I kind of slowed down as well then towards the end and I went into just like a um, prayer position <laughs> like I said I just put my hands together but I put, had them at my mouth I don't know why I just find that a really nice position mm-hmm. Um, I, I put my hands over my mouth yeah it's comfort like it's very comforting yeah. yeah something about it yeah and I and then I started getting because the music then started getting more emotional like kind of like uh, kind of dying down but like more like kind of Sen- not sensual no not, not that kind of music um i don't know the word like um just like more acoustic-y kind of stuff that was mm-hmm. heartfelt singers and stuff i don't know how to describe it but uh so i started getting real emotional then i started thinking about loads of stuff and i don't I can't even i can't even remember now but i was like i had like then i had like tears in my eyes and stuff and i was just kind of as it was all slowing down and uh 
and then yeah just kind of not when it finished i was like oh no <laughs> mm. you know and i was two hours did you go on your yeah. did you go on your own i went with that girl and um, who moved into my house michaela's her name ah, okay. and so she brought me there but she kind of let me know that it's not really a thing where you go with people you're not like dancing with one person the whole time so like i, I went in i kind of said hi to her and then i went to the other side of the room mm-hmm. um just because you're you're there for yourself re- mm-hmm. in a way um definitely i think the first time I, I think you should be there for yourself just to i don't know i, I don't mm-hmm. think there's any right or wrong way but for me i needed a bit of like me time to figure it out um and sometimes you'd stop if you felt like stopping you just stop like there's no and it was just accepting that there's no right or wrong yeah um so like if i once if i sat down a few times to do more breathing because i felt like i was kind of coming out of the i maybe when i started to become a bit more conscious of what i was doing i would like st- I, I sat down again and start breathing again because breathing always brings me back to that kind of state yeah. i suppose um and it was it was a cool mo- cool thing so like when you're you know when you're kind of like because I think without knowing, sometimes we're like locked into these cadences and rhythms and stuff. So like I do this on the left side. So then I should do that on the right <laughs> side. You know what I mean? But then like so a few times I'd be like, N- I just I do something. And then if I didn't feel like, it was like you're really trying to like tap into your feelings. Like so if I didn't feel like going to my right side, then I just do something else. And I'd like lift my arm up like this. And then sometimes I was making like w- like wings of a bird. And I was I was trying to just literally just do what I felt like without actually thinking about it. Just mm-hmm. do what my body felt like doing, which is really tough. Mm-hmm. Um, but you end up, it's cool. Like it's really cool. Um, so I, 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 I thought it was one of the best things I've ever done. Like for, really? yeah, I, for sure. Oh, shit. I think everyone should do it. Um, just because it's, it's just, it's just, I don't know. You're just really tapping into just something something in there like i'm not really sure i haven't only done it once so yeah um but everyone there is super happy super nice mm. um and they just know like they just there's no there's no ego i didn't see any ego anyway with anyone who i interacted with um which is nice to be just completely dissolved of that and um you, and you mentioned uh, about earlier about which is a really interesting thing to say mm. that y- you doing it for janet to like you know the dance thing at the wedding yeah was, was to be it was for her happiness not for you yeah for you, for you and that that is um really fascinating because uh i think that um we don't sometimes realize these things and you have to have um well you mentioned that is there someone on the roof by the way can, i i, I thought there was, i thought there was just someone in your room or i thought your girlfriend uh, was back or something i think there's pigeons on the roof yeah. but um but, uh, <laughs> so, um, but um you, you mentioned about the, the ceremony yeah, yeah and how this came to you as like an epiphany yeah, to, yeah. to not put yourself first but think about making yeah. someone else happy um and and it is and i but also at the same time i knew that i know that it is a good thing for me as well so it's not like i'm just doing it just for like yeah. but that was the main kind of driver i suppose yeah yeah um go, go on go, no, no. no i was gonna say so i I'll, I'll, mm. can you talk more about the, the ceremony yeah so <laughs> it's like where do you start um i suppose like uh i think you're you're kind of in like have curiosity about those kind of things i think a lot of people especially yeah. if you listen to like um any of the joe rogan podcasts stuff like that or that kind of world like i just know for me i've listened to like probably i don't know how many joe rogan episodes there is but hmm. uh, i've definitely listened to over a thousand of them like i've listened to them for years yeah, same and i used to say that there was like two turning points in my life like when i started to everything started to kind of change for a positive way one was listening to joe rogan podcast and two was traveling to australia to live in australia mm. now there's three <laughs> 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 the third is obviously the the the, 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 no, the ayahuasca ceremony oh, sorry, yeah. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that's definitely the third i was actually only thinking about that the other day i think there's definitely three turning points now but so um, for people that don't know ayahuasca mm, is mm. a um it's just uh, it's just a vine i suppose uh kind of mainly found in in the amazon and stuff and then i think uh i'm not the best person to to explain this but i think Mm. true it's essentially it's it it, it, um it's a psychedelic Mm. plant um i suppose like a mushroom like a mushroom like psilocybin and stuff i think it's a combination maybe of a few one of them is a is a inhibitor so it stops your stomach digesting mm-hmm. um for a what for a few hours so that then that the medicine can take its 
take its toll um because i think if you only had one like because so essentially it releases dmt in your in your body but we have dmt in our bodies anyway in our brains and stuff and it's mm-hmm. released in our brain right before we die i think is like one of the main times you can see it um be released so it's it's there anyway so it's not um but this i think the inhibitor i'm gonna get this really wrong but i think it that stops your stomach digesting um so when then when you have the drink the from the vine um rather than just like being digested and like kind of excreted probably i think it has it actually just allows it to like sink into your body or Mm -hmm. uh, kind of and just it's a very it's i think it's supposed to be the most intense psychedelic experience you can have Mm -hmm. i think there's maybe one that's above it that's the five mao dmt from the frog i think oh Uh, the poison thing yeah i think that's i think that's um according to my sources <laughs> uh, no, it's i think that's more a bit more maybe a bit more intense but shorter like this is so ayahuasca essentially that's a it's a psychedelic but i suppose when, when you when you had that experience you meant mm. you, you mentioned that about what, one of the things was doing this the dance for, for janet's happiness and your mm-hmm. happiness yeah. as well but, but mm-hmm. the other thing was about your other epiphany was yeah. to do with what you put in your body Right. yeah which is weird that was actually just kind of at the end yeah so i suppose i i I've, um so yeah basically because i haven't actually said it so i did an ayahuasca ceremony at the start of the year um and uh um there was a i knew because i was curious so, so going back to the podcast and stuff, i was definitely curious about it for years and years and years and i heard i've heard 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 about it being like a really transformative experience and stuff and that's not really for everyone you know i, I know for example my older brother would be like why would you want to do that like do you think you're broken kind of thing mm-hmm. um is, do you think there's something wrong and that's why you're doing it and kind of understand that but i just i'm really curious about i've always have been just i'm very impulsive i'm very like um when i i get addicted to things really easily like um and i think that just sparked my curiosity um and i was just really intrigued about it and i never really looked for it until it kind of found me in a way like I went at the time that I felt like I was now was a good time I asked the question and it was there for me like basically just through different people um but yeah the ceremony is yeah it's very intense I did I did two days of it um and yeah there's a few I, I think in, in with mushrooms and psilocybin and stuff like that I think they're very psychedelic but um it kind of just ends there in a way you'll see kind of some kind of stuff and um there won't be as much it won't cut as deep i suppose but with ayahuasca whatever whatever is going on in in the plants it it, it just it it's it's very visual but then at the same time it just taps into your it just taps into everything everything that you are and um it really just you have these epiphanies i suppose you call them um we are like really intense self like our introspections where you're going oh that's why blah or you are this or you are you do that a lot or you do this a lot mm. and why do you do that and you should just do this and like it's a lot of messages kind of thing so the main ones that i got from the two days and the, fir- the first day is it's, it's very difficult because the kind of you essentially have to go through dying <laughs> because it's just it's just the way that the plant is and it's kind of general consensus is that you the this is, this is going to sound so strange for people listening to this who uh, no, have no know. have no experiences. They're going to be like, what is he talking about? But you need to go and listen to people who actually um, will, th- will explain I, it much better. But. I'd say a lot of people that listen to this podcast are a mm. bit weird already. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they listen to me, talk, the, me talking. They must be yeah. as weird as me. They're like, saying. oh, we only did two days. I've done <laughs> 17. Um, so, yeah, you essentially like have to just accept death in the first day. And it's really, really, it was really tough. Um, but what, it part, what, what do you mean except that in what way like it kind of just um um you just you just kind of panic i suppose not panic I don't know, it's actually really hard to describe but and it kind of taps into your deepest fears i think at the start and i think it's like just the way the medicine works and um as well if you're not if you don't know how to interact with it as well like because for me it was my first like real psychedelic experience i suppose um so for me like my fear of water who i kind of what i kind of mentioned earlier like so it really manifested itself mm. through that so like i was essentially just sinking into like a black abyss that was water essentially and like is how i pictured it um ben, and can i ask you just i want to go back yep. to that but why are you scared of water why am i scared of water 
that's because it's scary. Um, it's just oh, yeah. I don't know because uh, I can't swim. I can't swim for like I can swim, but I can't float. I can't thread water. Right. Um, so not, no, there wasn't like one specific thing that happened to you, like you nearly drowned or anything like that. Uh, well, I nearly drowned last year, but that was after I was scared of water. Okay. Right. <laughs> yeah, I think when I was a kid, I did nearly drown, but I don't. I don't think that that was what made me scared of it. Okay. I could be wrong though. You were so busy kicking things, you forgot I to just swim. Forgot. Yeah, forgot to swim. <laughs> yeah, just, swim. yeah, that uh, was it. So you were saying, so you felt like you were you were in, going into black abyss. Yeah, and like I couldn't breathe and all this kind of stuff, and I just, mm. um, so that, and it felt like it feels like so your your concept of time and space completely disappears. So you're just not aware of anything. You're just aware of, I, I don't know that own that one that moment or whatever so for me it was just like i'm drowned i'm dying like basically mm. and trying to hold on to life kind of thing so which was in the form of a bucket that i was holding that you get to kind <laughs> of uh, puke into um but for me that was like the sides of the i don't know it was just something i was holding on to so um and it, i don't know it was just it was just very it was just horrible mm. um oh in like at the time, I just remember it being not nice, and I was kind of going, "No, I don't want, I don't want this, I don't want to do this, I don't want to da, 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 da. like just all of these kind of just." It's really, really, really hard to describe, but essentially, I had to just accept the fact that I could, that I just was going to die basically, and it's just like, okay, I just need to let go, and then once I let go, then I could breed, and then I was like through the other side kind of thing, and it, I was kind of like, because you're lying down during the ceremony, and then, and then in. I was kind of lying in in water like I washed up on a shore it was literally the sensation mm. and then everything was just really bright and beautiful and, and then I could see the people in the room around me and and they were also happy like kind of happy I don't know it was just um I just came through the other side I suppose in a way um so and then it was lovely then for the rest of that day and then all the messages started to come through then it was like okay you've you've done that now let's show you all this really worth um um uh, meaningful stuff like let's show you let's give you some worth What's, I'm, I'm trying to think of a term here uh, but I can't think of it um, but it was kind of like alright you've done that fair play now look at this that's kind of what it was like mm -hmm. you know and for me I think the lessons that I took from it then was like um, I think I told you the last time about um, that I, I, I so I started being really vocal then at that point I started being like like asking lots of, and being like because it without saying too much like there's people there who are suffering as well like and there's a lot of um pain and stuff in the room and sadness and stuff and a lot of people are there to heal and i would just i was really vocal because that's that's what i'm what i'm like i always have to say something and so i'd kind of be like oh they're so sad i just really want to help them like i'll be saying this out loud and then like the, the kind of people there there's people there who are just there to help and just kind of it's like it's okay you don't need to you don't need to help them. The only way you can help them is by helping yourself. And so I was like, no, but they're so sad. I just wish that they weren't so sad. And, you know, all this kind of stuff. And I kept like, I was I was probably super loud when I was saying this, you know. And then I was like, just so I was just talking and talking and talking. And then and the, the, this really nice guy um, basically just kind of said, look, the only way that you can help these is by breathing and focusing on yourself. Mm. And with your breath, you can you can help everyone else. Which again is probably what will help to lead me to yoga then as well. But um, and then so I started breathing and I took my t-shirt off and like wrapped it around my mouth. And I remember just being like, if you just stop talking, you know, there's that maybe that's the key kind of thing. So like mm. wrapped the t-shirt around my mouth. I was like bawling my eyes, crying and all at this point. Like, um, and then it was like when I closed my mouth, then obviously, um, you two ears and one mouth for a reason. Like, you're and I could just hear everything and see everything and kind of just I don't know everything just became heightened and I was kind of going oh like if I just you know listen more then I might actually pick up on this stuff and maybe I can help in this way and I can it was just strange it was just it's based essentially just kind of going you start thinking then like why yeah why do I always have to say something why why do I always have to be the one that has attention on them and why do i say these things to these people to get them to react in that way or why do i manipulate people by saying this like knowing that they will then feel a certain way or something mm. so it's just it's just all of these kind of realizations and then eventually i like took the t-shirt off because i realized it wasn't that i had to close my mouth it was just that i had to open my ears and um yeah it just became then that was a big lesson for me and I it's still hard to keep it uh, in everyday life but 
um through through breathing then and listening they're pretty good skills mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know if you re, you can you can say what you will about ceremony you can be like well that's obvious and blah 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 but if you don't see it you don't see it mm-hmm. um and I for sure didn't see it as much until I had that experience and I was kind of going yeah you, you do always do that or say that or you know why don't you just you know so now when someone says something to me I really try just to breathe before I answer mm-hmm. most of the time if, if it's if it's okay if it's me and you chatting downstairs because I kind of already know you but if someone new and you know they're saying something and you don't know their intentions or you might have suspicions about their intentions and stuff or 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 you know you might be emotional about something or, I don't know it, but breathing takes away emotion, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, so if someone goes, um, you know, you're ugly, and then you go, no, you're ugly. Like, but if you just, you know, that's a really silly example. But <laughs> like, if someone goes, you're ugly, and you just breathe, and then you think, and then just like that breath just kind of gives you a little bit of time to go. Well, they're probably just saying that because blah, and then you just kind of go, thanks, mm. and then well, and it just diffuses a lot. Yeah, um, and then listening as well. Because I think before, when I did the show, the six episodes of the show that we did on YouTube, this is all before the ceremony. And I, the whole time, I was definitely just waiting for my chance to talk when I was interviewing people. Bar the last episode, probably, with, with um, Paddy Slattery, because he was just so interesting. Um, but nearly every other time, I was just waiting to waiting to talk. I think we all do this, and I, probably, I, I definitely still do it a little bit. But it's hard. Like, being a good listener is a really good skill i think Mm -hmm. um and then breathing is is obviously (laughs) a really a really good skill (laughs) although yeah like um we all do it obviously otherwise you'd be dead but (laughs) um there's a way there's like there's a there's a method to it as well Mm. so that was one of the main messages and then like with some of the i just had uh, uh, again some kind of realizations about how the way i treat women and um not that i treat them really badly but i think um I again maybe with the talk maybe with the talking thing I, I would kind of say things I feel like I maybe said have said things in the past to girls that I'm saying it for a particular reason you know I'm, or maybe I was saying it because I I want them to think of me in that uh, in a certain way or I want you know you know that kind of way like mm. when someone says like something uh, or you're having a conversation and you go oh well I well I did this or, or will I blah 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 or you, you're saying something to direct the conversation a different way or saying um i don't know i just i feel like i had a, a kind of exposed like a bit of a negative i feel like i've had a negative relationship with girls since i was young um i think i girls i i didn't i wasn't a favorite of the girls in school and all this kind of stuff what, 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 in what way what? i just i was like i was bullied a good bit in school and then just girls just wanted nothing to do with me and um, you were bullied in school yeah, I know. I was tiny. I was tiny, and uh, you were tiny. Yeah, I was tiny. Yeah. What? In your, as in your stature? You yeah, I, was, I only got I only got really tall when I was like in secondary school, like midway through secondary school. I had a bit of a growth spurt. Yeah, but I was really small. I was like five foot two or something for most of the time. <sighs> and uh, yeah, so not not great school experiences. Not bad ones. Really, not too bad. But like bit of bullying, bit of stuff like that. But then definitely, I had like this thing with girls where they just the girls that I liked never liked me, and I'd always like try really hard and send them cards and. Make make my dad call over to their house with friendship bracelets and <laughs> and uh, things like that. Um, and I just never it was never reciprocated, I suppose. And I think then as I as I kind of got older and then I started doing like fighting and stuff like that, maybe I became a bit more appealing or something to 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 girls. And then it was almost like I was like, ha ha, you know, mm. jokes on you now, kind of thing. That was my kind of mindset. Mm. So then I would kind of, I, I feel like I would manipulate that a little bit and I'd be like, I just feel like I didn't treat women with their like kind of um, respect and stuff that they deserved. So I just, just, just again, just was kind of like just a bit of a lesson for me. Hmm. It was just kind of showing me that. And in strange ways, like it's hard to remember, recall properly, but there was like just strange visualizations of it, like. You know a girl dancing and then like going to like take off her clothes but then being like then me going well like she doesn't need to take off her clothes why, why does that even matter and like if i actually get to know her so then i then i'd like go to, and I, I was like you know dancing around her like now this is this visualization is, yeah, yeah visualization i'm like dancing around her, and i'm actually just like sending her lots of love and like you know helping her grow almost in a way and then like it just didn't matter then anymore whether you're wearing clothes or not wearing clothes or anything because we were just connected then and it's just kind of weird visual mm. visualizations of this kind of message that is basically just like just 
treat them, treat people well and none of the all of that kind of material stuff will separate or will disappear anyway and it's hard it's really hard to vocalize to put into words but i can feel it like mm. i know that i know the feeling that 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 i felt um but I, it's hard to put it into words but again it's something that i do have to remind myself of and i still do slip and i'll say something like why did you say that mm-hmm. you know but i think one of the main benefits of the of the ceremony because it's not may i'm only realizing this now it's kind of like it's not uh, it, it's obviously about the the particular the days that you spend um doing the ayahuasca and stuff but it's a lot about then the integration and it makes definitely makes you really self-analyzing so like now i will say something and straight away i'll be like why'd you say that what was your motive there Mm. you know what you must be looking for this don't do that don't be that person you know Mm. whereas that maybe didn't happen before so even just having that is is nice it's a nice change definitely um so yeah between that and then kind of the listening and then um some other like fu- there's some fun things as well like you know i had i had a really great image of this uh snail free falling like just free falling like just true and then like the wind was kind of making his face ripple uh because <laughs> he was going so fast like falling falling and i was like flying beside him and i was like i was like bro what's what's going on you're, you're falling and he just looked at me like with this look and he was like it's all good man it's all good so he, he was just like just take it slow. <laughs> so it's kind of saying like, you know what, you could be free falling through life and everything could be just like whizzing past you. You're going so fast, but like, just chill, like just, mm. just, just take it slow. <laughs> and I just remember this snail just kind of just going down with this face of like, just knowing, like just calm and uh, just kind of being like, just chill, just to chill out a little bit, you know? Well, what about your realization about mm. food? Oh yeah, sorry. So that's what you asked me. <laughs> You're like, I'm not going to eat snails yeah, anymore. Yeah, look, at no more snails. Um, it was kind of just one at the end. Yeah, it was really strange. I just um, I had just this one image mainly of me just like swimming in in the in the ocean, which is ironic because um, I can't swim. Um, but and then just grabbing like a fish and just taking a bite out of it, and I was like, why would I do that? I just and then I just haven't eaten meat or fish or since since that day. Mm. Um. It, it wasn't like a big huge like visualization or anything it was literally just that i was like um and there was there was someone there who at, then the next day was eating like a vegan meal and he was talking and he kind of talked a little bit about animals and stuff he's like i just i just don't know how people can can eat them and i think that's because i was in obviously a bit of a light vulnerable state as well it kind of just <laughs> sunk into my head and i was like yeah that uh that makes a lot of sense and i don't like i don't it's not which is kind of weird because some people are like oh. I don't like explaining it because it's not really for a moral reason or it's mm-hmm. not really for anything. It's just because now I just don't feel like putting something that was alive in my body. I know people will say the plants were alive and all this kind of stuff, but mm-hmm. um, look, um, that was just I'm just going with the feeling. The feeling yeah. um, so when I think about meat or fish now, I just feel nauseous. Mm-hmm. Um, even if I tasted a bit of egg recently and a bit, and I just was, I just felt really sick. Now oh. I still will have like mayonnaise and stuff like that because I can't really taste it yeah. with eggs, and I'm not as I actually feel nauseous now talking about it. Wow, it's crazy. It's, it's mad. Yeah, it's really intense. Um, it just builds up in my stomach. Yeah, but if I, I just if I if there's a little bit of egg and something, I don't I don't have too much qualms with eggs. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's just when I taste one, if I can actually taste the egg, I just get nauseous again. It's a strange one, and it, it's funny because like you know people ask you like, oh, why don't you eat meat anymore? And I'm not gonna go well. Mm-hmm. So I did this ayahuasca <laughs> ceremony. I did the most powerful psychedelic known to man. Yeah, it's then, not exactly small and it, talk. And it told me to not eat animals anymore. Um, yeah. So, like, I said it to you because I felt like you were kind of probably, maybe because you did yoga, you're on that kind of journey already. I don't know. Yeah. Um, or maybe you would have an open mind for that kind of stuff. Um, but I won't just say it to anyone. Um, I'll just be like, ah, I just don't feel like it. Yeah, because people are going to say, well, it's illegal, therefore it's ba- it's bad, you know. Like, And, yeah. and, and, and I think... I mean, don't get me wrong, mm. ayahuasca, uh, I've never tried it, but it's natural, but doesn't necessarily mean it's safe, but mm. that's the same for many things. In mm. you know, They do say if you have any pre-existing conditions, ayahuasca, mm. yeah, but you could say the same for anything, you know, like uh, yeah. any other drug, as it were. Mm. Um, so it's not to be, it's, if you are thinking about doing ayahuasca, which I, which I am mm-hmm. as well, oui. uh, real, um, <laughs> then, uh, then um, do your research and... Yeah. make your own decision uh but um yeah you'll, you'll yeah i think 
it's something that you will yeah definitely listen to a lot of people talking about it and read up on it like like i was years before i i i did it mm. um and it you'll kind of it sounds it sounds so wishy-washy to someone who hasn't but i'll be like you'll feel it kind of calling you like mm. you'll just kind of know i think you'll kind of know um but if you're not spiritual in any way that's going to sound funny to you mm. but if you feel like that then it's probably not the thing for you anyway mm. you know what i mean because if you're already being like oh well, that's stupid well then and and know. yeah if you're not exactly you know what i mean if you're not in that mindset already yeah you, you're you've already fallen at the first hurdle kind of thing and it's definitely something i would not do i know people have done it that um maybe shouldn't have done it mm -hmm. um but i just don't recommend it if it's if you're not if it's not really something that you're i don't know it's, hard it's also the intention behind it as well because mm. some people shouldn't drink alcohol you know you have yeah. that mate that's always a bad drunk mm. and they're drinking for the wrong reasons um so uh, what, what is your intention behind doing something are you trying to like put a, ba a plaster over something or mm. a band-aid in america mm. or are you looking for more of an introspective journey yeah and you're you're doing it from a uh a good mindset or a healthy mindset yeah. as it were i mean it's healthy i think it, you know what's it's clearly what's encouraged you to do is to be more introspective and mm. that is that is great and you know even sometimes you don't need any external stimulus to mm. to achieve psychedelic states you can do no. that mm. through breathing yep. it's just um yeah, you have the meditation versus medication yeah. <laughs> the debate that goes on a lot yeah um we we don't the, the fascinate yeah. what fascinates me is we really don't know the power that we possess w within us and mm. um but a lot of us are not educated on it no. and um i yeah. think i think and and also as well another we, we don't appreciate how powerful plants are and how connected mm. we are to everything else around us yeah well that's the, the only question i had going in because you have to obviously some sort of intent everyone's going to do it for some sort of reason but like someone asked me one of my housemates asked me before like the week before she's like what what are you gonna what are you trying to achieve or what is your question for the medicine i suppose and i was like i kind of just want to know how connected we all are mm. i suppose and yeah the answer is <laughs> very <laughs> like mm. very 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 um obviously then this is all perspective and or, or like opinion and all this kind of stuff but from what i have experienced and seen and what i know to be true is very like super super connected mm. um and that's the feeling of oneness during that kind of experience is just insane like mm. it was just insane i I can't even um I should show you the notes on my phone that I wrote down the <laughs> night the night of um because it's just you just you literally feel like there's no separation mm -hmm. you're like we are the exact same thing which in theory we kind of are mm -hmm. and like we're all made up of the same of the same things anyway and I like to think you know if you think about the big bang and so at one point we all were was it they say that the the head of a like a pin or something like that that's what size the universe was mm. and then so everything we were all we were all contained in that little tiny thing then it expanded mm. so at one point in time we actually were all basically together because it's all but then you know people start going yeah but a person is not the same thing as a table like i know mm. but technically we're, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We're, you know? like like i think um the and what Alan Watts talks about this about the mm. feeling of separateness or mm. uh, Sakaya Drishti is is essentially that we feel like we're not connected mm. and that causes a great amount of anxiety within us because mm. we feel so alone yeah, and, yeah. and and I think that um, this is something that if people someone's listening to this and they think god I have times where I just feel like very alone very detached mm. that it's an epidemic man mm, mm, there's a is, there's yeah. there's an epidemic of loneliness in modern life modern living and to uh, to just start to entertain or allow the the possibility of um of us being yeah. one is is for me a, a way to mm. find not 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 find happiness but to find purpose and and that connection because uh, and that's that's a big reason why alcohol is so popular i mean you sit down with someone you have a mm. beer with them 
changes like that. And mm. I think actually coffee's kind yep. of yeah. taking over from beer a little bit in that respect. Yeah, it is. Um, yeah. You know, but that's if if because it's because sorry Ben, just to mm. say like with with coffee, it's mm. psychoactive, mm. and um, when you have a coffee with someone, or it's like almost ritualistic. Mm-hmm. You're see, if I did this full circle, uh-huh. go back to coffee again. But you are you kind of like we're mm. we're sharing the same. Um, psychological ex- or psycho experience whatever you want to call it yeah, yeah. Um, sorry but I'm going off on one no you're bit. right you're right because yeah because <laughs> you're having the thing that I'm having and we're both kind of having it together yeah. going, oh isn't that nice yeah, yeah. kind of thing uh, but I, that's that's why I love coffee I think as well is because yeah. it I always say it's not about the coffee it's about what happens around the coffee yeah. and the connections and all this kind of stuff and you could say the same thing about beers and stuff as well um, obviously you know there's connections made and there's this and there's that and it's not so much about the actual thing but it's about it's about what it what it's like a catalyst for those things like yeah. coffee is definitely a catalyst for stuff like this you know mm-hmm. um, but that's where the word I mean, I mean, probably a lot of people listening to this know this already but the word yoga comes from meaning mm-hmm. it's from the same root word root word as the word yoke speaking of eggs mm. <laughs> but yeah. me- but meaning to join together and uh, is that what that means oh uh, yeah to join mm. yoga means that it's the same uh same comes from the same root word uh meaning to join a junction oh. yeah uh in in latin uh, uh, it's called um so what is it joining mind to body or mind, yeah is it um well everything to, every- everything, to everything. To everything i mean from a superficial point of view in a yoga mm. class it's mind body um yeah. and breath mm. oh, but mind body my body and just breath. got it yeah but the app, <laughs> the app i yeah. just i just had another one of those moments but <laughs> <laughs> my body but i suppose from um yoga is uh, the connection to something greater than ourselves mm. and i think that if you can achieve not achieve this but if you can practice this mm. um you help to alleviate a lot of suffering mm. Yeah, it's definitely a super positive thing to get people, because mm-hmm. that's feeling. I remember think like for me, I can't really empathize because I, I don't. I think there's maybe certain points in my life where I felt maybe alone, but now, it's I just can't even imagine ever feeling like that because I'm like, we are all very connected, mm-hmm. and I can just go to a coffee shop, <laughs> and say hello to the person making my coffee and ask them about their day, and then I'm not alone. Yeah. You know, I know, but it's a mindset thing, and some people have it. Have, have obviously they're kind of sick in that way, or maybe, maybe that's not a good word. But you know what I mean? They're, they're they really struggle to find the good in stuff like that, or find mm. they feel like they're alone because their version of alone doesn't mean that they're not that there's no one around them. It's that I don't know. I don't know. I actually don't know. Yeah, I mean, mm. it, well, it's 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 um, I think your upbringing or your your makeup definitely makes you more prone to feeling these ways than mm. others like say for example when i was growing up my mum and my dad but mum in particular really really like lavished attention on me mm. and um I, that made she's very she's a social butterfly and that made me that way mm. so when i was in school i was like the sociable guy you know mm. got everyone together and as we get older we our social circles get smaller and smaller and smaller mm. but i do think that some people don't have that up that type of upbringing or maybe they have the complete opposite where mm. they're not loved they're not cuddled they're not held when they're young and therefore they don't have the same equipment mentally to deal with modern life and, mm. and i think that that's why i think yoga and coffee is becoming mm. so popular mm. yeah i actually do man it sounds it sounds on a superficial level quite yeah um superficial I know, I know what you mean, yeah. <laughs> but again it's not about the thing it's about yeah what happens around it yeah um yeah probably yeah because it's kind of turned people more social i suppose and it's given them an alt especially in ireland i think it's the coffee has given us an alternative as to instead of it used, it used to be like years ago i would go to the pub and have a few points but now it's like i oh, will have a coffee mm-hmm. or something um i think that that's a good benefit of it you know but and people will say well you know um it's changing you know a psychoactive state is maybe not ideal but it's interesting to change your consciousness or to experiment with it. <laughs> yeah, man, we we live mm. once, man. Like, mm. um, it, I mean, if you like, it's fun to think in different ways, to feel different ways, and and um, as long as you're not hurting anyone. Yeah, and that like that's why people are like, oh, they talk about like even stuff like marijuana, stuff like that, blah, blah blah. But they're the they're the people who drink. Then you're like, hold on a minute, mm-hmm. but you're completely changing 
you know you're just swapping one thing out for another like and mm-hmm. and that one you know alcohol is probably the most negative one mm-hmm. out of anything really um because of the amount of accidents and fights and um it's for sure it's the most damaging one mm-hmm. um obviously well as opposed to, like not like um maybe like hard drugs are obviously really bad as well but you know what i mean in terms of if you were to have like alcohol versus psychedelics mm-hmm. like you're just you're i've choose psychedelics every day because it's just yeah i but, don't know it's changing yeah it's hard to it's really there's so many perspectives and opinions and um it's well, so fun well johan hari who's mm. was on the jerrigan podcast he mm. says the opposite of addiction is not sobriety the opposite of addiction is connection mm. and how w- people become addicted because they're lacking something from that's what it is yeah. they're lacking something they haven't yeah. been loved enough i mean i come from an irish family i mm. am familiar you know alcoholism come on man like i mean yeah. you throw a stone you meet an irish family that has uh, yeah. a, a, experienced alcoholism mm-hmm. and uh this is i don't i don't see it as like um or any kind of when i see a, someone who has a drug addiction mm-hmm. like i went out with this girl uh, I, sh- I probably shouldn't say this but i'm gonna say it anyway but i remember she she referenced she made reference to she was kind of posh and uh she called someone a junkie in a really mm. a really horrible like spiteful way she was like oh they were a junkie mm. and i says you shouldn't call them. You shouldn't say that mm. because that is someone who was a ba- who was a child once, mm. and maybe they weren't loved like you were loved, mm. and um, they are seeking comfort in something outside of themselves. Yeah. And this isn't this is someone who's hurting, you know. And uh, generally, it is. Yeah. Yeah. It's and it's real. Uh, when you don't think of each other as one, the, you really need to think like, that could be me. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I just was lucky because I was loved. Yeah. If you don't think that way, then you are allowing yourself to be separate. Mm. You know, um, yeah, shit, we're in deep there, man. Yeah, everyone's listening to this, being like, "This is what's this have to do with yoga? <laughs> like, what's going on?" <laughs> but it does. But it has everything to do with yoga. Absolutely. Um, man. And I, I, I will say in terms of like yoga, meditation, all that kind of stuff, um, and the whole medication versus meditation thing, I, I, I can see both sides of the argument, um, but um, with the medic medication, I suppose with with the medicine, it. it uh, it it kind of showed me what I'm aiming for in a way uh, it's, hmm. it's so like say before if I would have tried to meditate um, I'd be like well, what am I doing here I don't know it just didn't it just didn't really resonate with me at all but now it's kind of giving me a target almost not that my target is to have loads of psychedelic experiences but there's a certain feeling hmm. or state that you are trying to achieve and, and it can be just it doesn't have to be meditation actually because metal well, sorry meditation is is very broad like people think that it's sitting down and doing nothing but it doesn't have to be like a a yoga class for me is meditation whether it's tough or easy or whether i'm lying down or whether i'm trying to do a handstand like because you're still you're still doing the same thing you're trying to be present and you're trying to work through your breath um so that could be meditative and and you it all brings you to this kind of state of just like um like not that kind of connectivity but like a presence like a mm-hmm. like you're actually there kind of thing mm. um so i think i think it definitely has helped for and that's it was after that then that i started looking into kundalini and mm. that's what led me now to doing yeah like f- you know a, a crap load of yoga classes every week <laughs> um because i'm trying to i like like i like that place like after the kind of ceremony so if you're in a very light state i would say for a while um uh, where you just read everyone's your best friend and mm. you know you just you just see treat everything with love and you you know you have patience for everyone you kind of realize that yeah that guy it could be me and you know you have a heightened sense of that and i like that mm-hmm. you know so i th- and i think yoga is a good way to get you back to that definitely if um and there's other things as well like yoga meditation like um reiki i don't know whatever you're into um but you've got to meet the yoga halfway you can't go to yoga class and be like, I don't, I expect to, to feel a different way. You you have mm. to um, be open to it changing you over time, you know, or not changing is the wrong word, but to influencing you. It's like if you're going to learn anything, mm. you can't sit there and be like, right, teach me something. This, as the student, you mm. have to meet the teacher halfway and, okay. and, and be open to learning, I think. I in, think. In what sense? Like just. I think a lot of people go to, well, 
a lot of people, uh, or I know when I went to yoga, I was like, this is bullshit. Mm. This, I don't get this. I, I'm just mm. a bit of stretching. And I heard mm. the teacher say certain things, but my mind was so close to it. Mm. I mm. would never do the arm, never make the sound of the arm. I, I I felt was, that so... was me before as well. I would, I, would, I, would, I, would, I would never do it. Yeah. I, I wouldn't even put my hands together in prayer. Mm, yeah, because it reminded me of church. Yeah, me too. That's and, why I wouldn't do it. Yeah, so I was yeah. a bit like, no, nah, I'm not conforming. Yeah. No, I, I, I stopped going yeah. to church when I was 16, yeah. and I'm not going back to being told what to do yeah. from someone at the top of a class. But yeah. then I realized uh, that I wasn't getting much out of it, mm. and I thought, okay, and it starts off small, like, I'll do a hum, because the teacher goes, you can yeah. hum now instead of arm. Mm. So I just did a... Oh, we didn't do an arm with Sarah. We can do, we can do, we do oh, at the end. We can do an arm with some beatboxing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice. So, okay. um, uh, and I thought, yeah, that's what I mean about meeting the teacher halfway. Mm. You've got to be open for the new experience. It's true. Yeah, because I had a completely different view of it before. And there was actually a moment during the ceremony where I, uh, I put my hands into prayer. And I was kind of like there and I was, it was in front of my mouth, like I talked about earlier. Mm. And then there was a moment where I kind of looked at my, sorry, I looked at my hands and I was like, oh, I get it now. Yeah. And then since then, now, like I, 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 I'd stay in hands pr- in prayer position for the whole class if, if she told me yeah. to. Like, yeah. uh, but I just didn't get it before and I, and I wouldn't. And the arm and stuff, I just wouldn't. I just wouldn't do it. Mm-hmm. So I, I think maybe even for me, like I probably would have achieved that after you. But if I hadn't done, I wouldn't be doing as much yoga. Like I wouldn't be. So I'm really thankful for the for the kind of journey I'm on now with plant medicines mm-hmm. um, that like that's ongoing <laughs> mm-hmm. and um because it has brought me now to this um place that i don't know if i could have got to so so in that sense i i i'm, I'm thankful for it and i wouldn't tell anyone to do it mm-hmm. i wouldn't be like yeah you should do that but it's pretty cool yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. pretty awesome um just sharing your experience yeah so like and it just brought me to that kind of level and really really made me appreciate um yoga like but i, I remember before before I would have done that or started in this journey, I suppose I, mean, I was following some yoga teacher and she put up things. She was saying she was struggling to get people to be vocal during yoga class. And I was like, oh, well, you shouldn't matter. And da, 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 like you, you should just let them do them, which I kind of still kind of agree with. But I now I can see why it is important and mm-hmm. well, not important. But it's just if you can if you can get someone to let go to be able to do that, mm. it's very beneficial for them to be in that way. Anyway, it's not like you're trying to, obviously you don't want to force anyone, no. but like if you can help someone to get to that point, they're going to be thankful, mm. you know, um, because it's a nice way to be just to kind of get rid of your ego, mm-hmm. get rid of all the kind of, in the same way that the dancing as well. It all exact, ties in, man. Exact same thing. It all ties in. Um, yeah. Know the way broadly and you'll see it in all things. Yeah. So, Musashi. Yeah. Yeah. Um, man. But it's true. Yeah. If you can just get any, and it even helps with jujitsu now, because I'm like, right you know maybe some like a white belt is, is like getting a better position on me and instead of being like oh that's i'm getting really annoyed and trying to use force and stuff then i'd be like okay that's, i just need to i obviously made a mistake there i'm just going to do that now and and uh and if or if someone's re- being really aggressive like the guy you were talking about earlier um mm-hmm. <laughs> you know that you had encountered then it, that's obviously him something in the same you know maybe he's feeling a certain way Mm -hmm. and feels like that's what he has to do so instead of like kind of resisting that like just kind of allow it and Mm -hmm. find your way around it rather than trying to go through it and stuff so i think it helps with everything just having that mindset yeah absolutely um yes nice man that was epic i think this is the longest episode i've ever done sorry no it's great (laughs) man it's great um so she finished with an arm and beatboxing um, arm and beatboxing. I, I can do yeah. the arm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, your arm is better. Do, uh, do you know what's actually really... No, I mean, your beatbox is better than oh, mine. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah? I was just going to say, do you know what's really hard and you get us to do it in every class? What? Uh, is arm lying down. It's really hard. Is it? I find it really difficult. Interesting. I can't get the same... Um, I can't get the same depth with my breath. Huh. When I saw so when I arm lying down, I'm like, this isn't my best arm. <laughs> I do, I, I do that because people are self conscious about doing it sitting up sometimes. Okay. So I get, yeah. I do it sitting down at the start of the class, and yeah. the people have done one, and then yeah. the next time I do it, I often have them sitting up at the yeah, end. Right, yeah, right. Yeah. I so, find it really difficult. Yeah. That's good feedback. Have you ever tried it? Oh yeah, I've armed lying down. Line, I've armed yeah. lying down. Yeah. <laughs> maybe you just got it. Maybe you're a better armor. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
I, did I answer all your questions? I'm not sure. Yeah, man, that's great. Yeah. So you happy? Sh- sh- hey, you, you yeah. am, and uh, what kind of beat do you want? <laughs> yeah, you you free, free, start. free start. Yeah. Okay. Right. Ready. Um. <laughs> nice. I didn't know what way to go. That was sick. Um, yeah. Thank you, mate. Cool. Cheers. Awesome. Thanks yeah. very much. Thanks, mate. <laughs> Woohoo. Thanks so much for listening. Hope you enjoyed that one. It, um, yeah, man, we're, we're doing a bit of omen and a bit of uh, beatboxing. Why not? Um, so, yes, I um, hope you enjoyed that podcast. The sponsors, once again, are Om Apparel. So om.com forward slash hashtag TYLP. Go to the website, pick out some gear that's eco-certified, that is made with the best production processes to look after the environment and reduce the damage we do to our planet. So if you go to their website, you can pick out some gear for yourself or a fella you know or love. Um, and I hope you love them if you're buying them clothes. And you put them in the promo code Kevin, you get 15% off. Other sponsors, small changes, organic, eco-friendly, plant-based, whole foods and products. They do refills, juice bar, and they believe in a zero waste ethos. So go to either of those companies. I get a small little cut out of them, but nothing from small changes. Um, but, uh, you know, they are a sponsor, so they do help us out. Uh, like, like I said, if you're looking to do something in person, an event, then come to our open day with Yoga Hub, which is July 27th. That's on a Saturday if you want to think about coming yoga teacher. And also if you'd like to learn how to handstand, come to Greystone's Yoga Studio on August 31st, right next to the beach, beautiful location. All the information is on kevinboyyoga.ie. Leave a review on iTunes if you get a chance and please share it with your friends on Instagram stories. Thanks so much as always. Feel free to get in touch. Appreciate you all. Love you all. Peace. See you next week.